Let's get right to it. Stephen, why is it important to find the grand design of our universe? A mind-blowing cosmic experiment, similar to the double-slit experiment, has amazed everyone. It showed that our observations through telescopes might actually be altering the past of the universe. This discovery has sparked a major question in astronomy. How can something we observe now change what happened in the past? Scientists realize that peering back into time, even all the way back to the Big Bang, our present observations select one out of many possible quantum histories for the universe. The very universe may be constantly emerging from a haze of possibility, that we inhabit a cosmos made real in part by our own observations. John Wheeler, scientist and visionary, collaborator of Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr, mentor to many of today's leading physicists, and the man who chose the name Black Hole to describe the unimaginably dense, light-trapping objects now known to be common throughout the universe. He is one of the last of the towering figures of 20th century physics, a member of the generation that plumbed the mysteries of quantum mechanics and limbed the utmost reaches of space and time. After a lifetime of fundamental contributions in fields ranging from atomic physics to cosmology, John Wheeler has concerned himself in his later years with what he calls ideas for ideas. In this ideas for ideas, he is introduced to a shocking perspective of our universe and its nature. John Wheeler said, I had a heart attack on January 9th, 2001. I said, that's a signal. I only have a limited amount of time left, so I'll concentrate on one question. How come existence? Wheeler believes the answer to this question essentially depends on one of the strongest aspects of modern physics. According to the rules of quantum mechanics, our observations influence the universe at the most fundamental levels. Wheeler's hunch is that the universe is built like an enormous feedback loop a loop in which we contribute to the ongoing creation of not just the present and the future, but the past as well. To illustrate this, Wheeler did something amazing. What he did was he tested the most famous double-slit experiment on a cosmic scale, but what he found shocked everyone. His experiment concluded how our telescope observations are changing our universe's past and shows us one universe out of many possible universes. To grasp this concept more clearly, let's dive into this fascinating cosmic version of double-slit experiment. But first, let's start by exploring a little bit about the double-slit experiment. As we know, matter, at its most fundamental level, exhibits both particle and wave nature. When we shoot photons through two slits and place a detector to see which slit each photon goes through, we see a straightforward pattern of two bars on the screen. But when we take away the detector and don't track the photons, something bizarre happens. One would expect to see two distinct clusters of dots on the film, corresponding to where individual photons hit after randomly passing through one slit or the other. Instead, a pattern of alternating light and dark stripes appears. Such a pattern could be produced only if the photons are behaving like waves. This implies that without the detector, each photon somehow goes through both slits at the same time, like a breaker hitting a jetty. The outcome of the experiment depends on what the physicists try to measure. If they set up detectors beside the slits, the photons act like ordinary particles, always traversing one route or the other, not both at the same time. But if the physicists remove the detectors, each photon seems to travel both routes simultaneously like a tiny wave, producing the striped pattern. The double slit experiment showed us just how bizarre nature can be. But here's the twist. John Wheeler took it to a cosmic scale, revealing something even weirder than what we already thought we knew. The double slit experiment demonstrates that Physicists' observations determine the behavior of a photon in the present. On the other hand, 
Wheeler's cosmic version shows that our observations in the present can affect how a photon behaved in the past. Well, let's understand this amazing experiment. Picture this. A faraway quasar is like a flashlight, beaming out light or tiny particles called photons. Quasars are incredibly bright cores found in early galaxies. Now imagine that there are two other large galaxies between Earth and distant quasar. As we know, the gravity of massive objects like galaxies can bend light. In Wheeler's experiment, this two huge galaxies substitute for the pair of slits, and the distant quasar is the light source. Just as photons can pass through two different slits in a double-slit experiment, similarly, here, photons coming from a distant quasar can pass through one or the other galaxy. Suppose that on Earth, some astronomers decide to observe the quasar. In this case, a telescope plays the role of the photon detector in the double-slit experiment. If the astronomers point a telescope in the direction of one of the two intervening galaxies, they will see photons from the quasar that were deflected by that galaxy, and they would get the same result by looking at the other galaxy. But the astronomers could also mimic the second part of the double-slit experiment. By carefully arranging mirrors, they can simultaneously beam photons coming from paths around both galaxies onto a piece of photographic film. Alternating light and dark bands would appear on the film, identical to the pattern found when photons pass through the two slits. Now, here's an odd part. The quasar could be very distant from Earth, with light so faint that its photons hit the piece of film only one at a time. But the results of the experiment wouldn't change. The striped pattern would still show up. It means that a lone photon not observed by the telescope traveled both paths toward Earth, even if those paths were separated by many light years. And that's not all. By the time the astronomers decide which measurement to make, whether to pin down the photon to one definite route or to have it follow both paths simultaneously, the photon could have already journeyed for billions of years, long before life appeared on Earth. The measurements made now determine the photon's past. In one case, the astronomers create a past in which a photon took both possible routes from the quasar to Earth. Alternatively, they retroactively force the photon onto one straight trail toward their detector, even though the photon began its jaunt long before any detectors existed. This suggests that the path the photons took was not fixed until astronomers chose exactly what they wanted to measure. This is strange because those photons began their journey toward Earth billions of years ago and passed through both galaxies to reach us. But when astronomers chose a different measurement method, the path of the photon suddenly changed. It seems our current observations are indeed shaping the universe. It would be tempting to dismiss Wheeler's thought experiment as a curious idea, except for one thing. It has been demonstrated in a laboratory. In 1984, physicists at the University of Maryland set up a tabletop version of the delayed choice scenario. Using a light source and an arrangement of mirrors to provide a number of possible photon routes, the physicists were able to show that the paths the photons took were not fixed until the physicists made their measurements. So, does the universe need humans to exist? Well, according to Wheeler, not really. Even though our conscious observation is part of creating the universe, it's not the main way quantum stuff becomes real. Regular things like matter and energy are the big players here. John Wheeler talks about a high-energy particle from radioactive stuff in the Earth. This particle is kind of like those photons in the two-slit experiment. It could go in many ways at once, but it only becomes real when it bumps into something, like a piece of mica. Now, the cool part is, it's not a person making it real, it's the mica. This piece of rock transforms what might happen into what actually happens. So the universe doesn't just depend on humans. 
It's got its own way of becoming real through everyday stuff like rocks and particles. Well, understanding the universe and how it operates remains a perpetual mystery for us humans. Our conscious minds are limited in comprehending the vastness of our universe. Despite this, our curiosity persists, driving us to constantly ask questions and explore the wonders of nature. That's all for today. Share your thoughts in the comments about this experiment. Thank you.